Let's go ahead and put together a very simple Android Room application here. So this application, uh, to make things a little bit more fun, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a simple app. I'll call this No Do App. So as opposed to To Do App, this is going to be the opposite of To Do App. Just a little play in words. So open our Android Studio. I'm going to go say File, New new project and such. So for us now, I'm going to go ahead and get the basic activity because I'm going to need this floating button there, floating action button. Say next. Let's call this no do just like that. Everything is good. But one thing I'm going to change here is you notice it went straight to 26 because actually when I do, was doing some testing, that is what I have had chosen for that previous application, a test application. Now, this is very important to notice indeed that we need to use API 26. But in this case here, because Room, Android Room, is specific to certain devices, we will have to go to 26. That is the minimum we can get. So it's going to be Android Oreo. So Android 8.0, API 26. Okay. Very good. Now, the other thing you can notice here is there is this help me choose. We never really looked at this. Maybe this is the good time. So if you click here, it's actually going to show you all of the Android platform versions here. So there's their, their names and their number code name. There's also the API level. So 4.0 is ice cream sandwich, which is API level 15. Jelly bean, there's different flavors of it. So 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, and so forth. Uh, being Kit Kat 4.4, 19. Okay, so this is where we always have been kind of uh, building our applications on because it covers a lot of different devices over 95% as you saw. Okay, so the lower you go, you notice the percentage gets really small. So at 19, we have 95.3, like I said, at Jelly Bean 16, 99.6 devices. Okay, and it looks like the ice cream sandwich, uh, they don't even show there because it's probably being phased out. Now, this is an, one of those inherent problems with Android that is indeed a curse and, of course, a blessing, right? Because of that fragmentation that we spoke about. So this is kind of helpful and you can also click around and gives you all this information for each of these items that we click. Okay, so that's pretty handy. I'm going to say cancel out of that. And so we're back here. Make sure it's API 26 because some of the dependencies that are going to be using for Android Room require at least API 26. Now, you notice the device number is 6% of devices. That is, again, the downside of fragmentation. But in this case, we want to get this to work, so we better go use what they require us to use API 26 at least. All right, I'm going to say finish. Should have everything been created at this point. And a few seconds later, we should see our project is here. So before we even start working on the, the code, there's a few things that we need to do in terms of setting things up. The first thing we need to do, let's go to our Gradle. Let's go to our Build Gradle mod Module app. Click that. Notice I had to specify because we have two of them, but we need the module app. So here, inside of dependencies, this is where I'm going to attach a few things that will allow us to actually work with Room. So I have all of them already created somewhere. I'm going to just copy from my folder here that you can't quite see, and I'm going to put all of them here. Okay. The moment you do that, notice that uh, we have to go ahead and sync everything. Go ahead and sync. Now we're going to have a problem here because it says room version uh, for root project no do of type org, Gradle, API project, it's not working. So if I go say open here, it's going to say something is not quite right. Well, that means we have to actually add something else into our other project no do. So other build at Gradle. So not the second one, the first one. So double click here and I'm going to go ahead and paste in another extension which is going to allow us to get this to work. So, so I'm going to go to the end of this file here. I'm going to just put it here. So this extension says room version I'm going to be using is 1.1.1 and the life cycle version is also 1.1.1. Okay, let's go ahead and try again. And build is successful. All right. So these are very important components we need to add into our Gradle in order for this to work. 
So I'll have all of these ready for you to actually just copy and paste into the respective build gradles for you. So you don't have to have to type all of this. Okay, so making sure that everything is actually building correctly here, we should be good. If not, make sure that you're putting things exactly where they're supposed to be. Remember this last one here has to be to the inside of the project name build at Gradle. The first one had to be inside of a build at Gradle module app. Okay, that's a very important distinction. So next thing, what I'm going to do, let's go to our app. Let's close this Gradle script. Go our Java folder there. Inside here, I'm going to divide things a little bit different, of course. I'm going to use create a UI package. This is going to be data. Put controller there. We may not use all of this, but at least we can divide things around. Util. model. That's good. So at least we have those folders there where we can put all of these different pieces of code, classes that is. All right, so I'm going to get rid of all of these Gradle there. We don't need that. So the next thing we need to do is to create our entity. Remember, our entity is just a table. Now, because we're talking about Android Room here, everything is going to be more object oriented, meaning that instead of going and create the table the way we did before, we are actually going to use create an entity class that will help us create our table. It's going to be pretty cool. So our entity class, I'm just going to go ahead and put inside of our inside of our model here. That sounds good. So I'm going to say new Java class, just a simple class. I'm going to call this do like that it's just like a single object that represents a no do. Notice also this entity here, not only is it going to represent a table as an entity, but also going to represent the data type. Okay, our model. Very good. So we have no do there. We say okay, for our no do table here, which is also a model type, um, I'm going to make it very simple. So all we're going to have is just pretty much one item or one instance variable, we could have added all sort of things. But the main one just going to be one which is going to be a text. So I'm going to say private string, just call make this a no do like that. So next, I'm going to create a constructor. So I say constructor here, I'm going to pass the no do like that. Very good. And I'm going to create a, in this case, a getter. So I'm going to put a getter like this. And there we go. But this there's a lot of limitations because remember, this is how we did before. Now the beauty of Android room, there's this new concept called annotations. So annotations in Android and in Java, in fact, it's a Java thing, <laughs> really allows us to connect certain metadata into our classes or our instance variables. Meaning at this point here, like I said, there's no do it's a model type, which is also a table per se, but Android room doesn't know that. So we need to give instructions to it. So it knows exactly that we are actually creating a table, which also is a model type of a no do item. That's why we're going to be using annotations, which will allow us to give those instructions to our compiler that when it reads this no do, it will know exactly how to set up our table and everything. That's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do here. So to make this an actual table as well, at the top, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put an at that's how we start an annotation. And all of a sudden, you notice that we have all these at um, classes and all of them end up with uh, persistence, 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 and so forth. So this is good. That means now we can use remember these annotations, these little bits of code, these little bits of metadata that the compiler will then create things the moment it hits the moment it reads these annotations. So in this case, we're going to direct this class to be a table. So we're going to say entity, we're going to make now we're making this class an entity. Look at that. The moment you do that, you said, you notice here, it says Android persistence room entity. So it imports that entity for us through our annotation. Right? It starts at entity and the beauty here and then I can pass something I want this to be a table name. Look at that it even helps us hit enter. And then it says, Okay, what is the name of our table name, which is an entity, right? Well, we can put whatever we want, I'm going to say, No, do 
table like that. We don't have to put semicolon. This is very cool. So now this no do class, it will know to be a an actual table which will have name no do table. So the next thing we're going to do, in fact, I'm going to add here another private int. I'm going to call give us an ID like that. I want to make sure that this ID is actually recognized as a primary key when this code is run, when this no do class is run. Well, we're going to use again at and I can say primary key like that. And the cool thing is I can also pass to say I want this to be auto generated default to true. Look at that. So we are prepending or adding or attaching all of these information attached to our private ID here. And at the top here, we added this at entity to make sure that this no to do or no do I should say, is indeed a table, no do table like that. So internally, that is going to be created automatically. That is the power of using Android room, which takes advantage of annotations. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, so your turn now. Try to figure out how to make this, for instance, I want to make this to be a column, right? Because now we have a table. Now we want to create a column. So this will be a column, right? How do we do that? Well, we can call, go ahead and say at here. Obviously, I'm going to say column. Look at that. There is such a thing. Column, and I'm going to pass the name. What name we are going to add? The name is going to be, I can say no do underscore call for column right and look at this if I want to make sure that this is never null I can say at non null all right so my string no do now it's now being connected uh, made to be a no do column because we say column info is going to be name no do columns so we are creating our column as we go because we created a table we created a primary key and now we're creating all those columns. Now this primary key here, we didn't have to put column increment because this we said it's going to be primary key and auto generated. So that means it will automatically generate the system will generate that which is exactly what we want. There we go. So what I can do next if I want to make sure that this no do here. So this is our constructor. Ah, look at that I can append a non null as well like that to say whenever we want to create a no do cannot accept an empty string, right? That makes sense because then that makes no sense to have an empty no do in our list. And before I forget here, let's go ahead and create a, a getter and setter getter and setter like that for no do. So we have a complete picture. So now we have get ID, set ID, set no ID. That looks good. All right, so there we go, folks. <laughs> it wasn't bad, was it? Very good. So now we've learned how to create our table using annotations in Android Room. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.